Hello, good afternoon, everyone. This is Tomas Cusera speaking from Warsaw. I'd like uh, to welcome you to our joint webinar organized today with uh, ILC, uh, who is a life science and a medical care distributor in Portugal. Um, I am the director of business development here, and Sara Ramos from ILC. She is the NGS product manager on uh, ILC side. The webinar is going to be divided in three parts. You know, the first part is going to be presented by by Sara, uh, who will tell you a little bit more about you know ILC as the company and about the product for product portfolio they are you know distributing in uh, in Portugal, and then. Uh, I'll take over and I'll present our company and our tools and services for interpretation of NGS data. And in the last part, we will take some questions from the audience. So here you can see there is a section for questions and answers. So feel free you know, to type in your questions as we speak and uh, we will try you know, to get back to you at the end of the webinar. Also, the webinar, webinar is being recorded, recorded for your future reference. So I think now we are pretty much ready to go and start. So Sarah, now over to you. Okay, we'll share my screen. Oh, yes, I guess you can. Uh, it's telling me that actually I can't. Uh, I'll, I'll make you a co-host. Okay. Now you shall be able to share your screen with us. Okay. So let's do this. I'm sorry. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Sara, and I work as a field application specialist at ILC Group. And today I will give you a brief resume of ILC history and uh, our position in the market. So who we are, ILC group is divided in three companies, ILC, ILC services and Stack. We were founded on October 1977 and uh, we are a family company with a modern and competitive uh, philosophy. Our head office is in Lisbon, and we do have a ranch office in uh, uh, Oporto. But our trained and qualified team covers all the Portuguese territory, including Madeira and Açores Islands. We are a customer oriented company that combines research with clinical and industrial expertise and we are proud to introduce and support new technologies in the Portuguese scientific and biotech community. And I'm happy to tell you that recently we became a member of the Health Cluster uh, Portugal. So the markets we serve, due our experience and, um, and knowledge, we are present not only in the clinical and life science market that I do believe are the ones why most of you know us, but we are present as well in the food, industrial and environmental fields. And after uh, sharing with you the ILC position on the Portuguese market, uh, I think I will focus a little bit uh, more in the clinical and life science solutions that we can offer you and, of course, help you to implement. We have been present in the genomics field for the last nine years, not only in the research and development market, but in the clinical uh, as well. And actually that helped us to acquire a certain um, knowledge and know-how that we, we used to help you with your genomics uh, projects. Our expertise covers from NGS library prep and analysis, genotyping, non-invasive prenatal testing, epigenetics, single cell sequencing, gene expression and transcriptomics, microbiology, cytogenetics, um, 
agrogenomics, forensic, and we do have oncology and rare diseases solutions too, and I could just go on and on and on. Uh, in parallel, we can offer you solutions in the molecular and cell biology field, such as CRISP, cloning, hybridization and amplification of nucleic acids, high content screening, live cell imaging, pharmacology screening, single cell analysis and radioactivity. Um, we can provide you to automation solutions such as NGS library prep um, robots, nucleic acid extractors based on magnetic beads, liquid handling and microfluidics systems and biotherapeutics workstations. And uh, we also have proteomics expertise with protein purification, characterization and quantification and with protein, protein or protein compound interactions. And um, our partners, we are on the market with um, all of these companies that I do believe that most of you already uh, know them. But I would like to mention that, for example, with Perkin Elmer, we do have automation solutions to NGS library prep kits. Uh, with 10x genomics, we have single cell library prep kits and data analysis. With Vitro Life, we have solutions for the pre implantation genetic testing regarding to the in vitro fertilization. With Verogen, we do cover NGS forensic uh, market. And with Iogenol, we have epigenetic uh, solutions. And with uh, Paragon Genomics and Forbasis, uh, we are able to offer you different assays for precision medicine and research. And we have kits and panels customized or not, for oncology, genetic disorders and uh, infectious uh, diseases. But as you know, the market is very demanding and we were missing a bioinformatics solution. So I'm happy to tell you that from now on, we, ILC Group and Varsum Clinical are partners and this is our bioinformatics solution to offer you. And for the ones that uh, doesn't know us yet, I will introduce you to our life science team. Philippe Fernandes is our life science coordinator and account manager, is responsible for Lisbon area and the south. Mariana Leal is responsible for the north and the Portuguese islands. Joana Abreu is responsible for center and I'm the field application specialist and we are here to help you. So, Thank you, and now I will leave you with um, Toma Thomas. All right, Sarah, thank you. Thank you very much for, for a nice introduction to your company and to your services. Now I'll take over. Okay. I'll share my screen. Uh, oh, okay. Can you stop? Can you or can I stop? No, I think I have. Uh, Oh yeah, now, so now I can share my screen. All right. Okay. Okay, here we go. So let me maximize Good. the screen again. Oh, right. All right. So uh, again, my name is Tomas Kusera and I'm the director of uh, business development at Safeter. Uh, Safeter is a precision medicine and bioinformatics, com bioinformatics company. Uh, we are based uh, in, in Switzerland, in Lausanne. We are on the market since 2014 and we develop tools for the processing and interpretation of NGS data, you know, specifically for chemical purposes, although we also serve uh, research customers. So Varsom, it's our top product. Uh, from our perspective, as a precision medicine and bioinformatics company, we see several challenges in bringing NGS technology to the clinical practice. Obviously, there are many more challenges out there. However, we are focusing on three challenges in particular. The big challenge number one is the fact that the annotation data are really fragmented and spread over many data resources. Right. And so, you know, the interpretation part 
of, of the pipeline, you know, can be seen as a puzzle game, right? To get a complete picture, you need to place in the right positions all the little pieces. On top of that, our understanding gets better pretty much every day. What, what, which means that what was valid yesterday doesn't have to be valid, you know, tomorrow or the day after. And third, there is also a little standardization and consistency in terms of interpretation of NGS data, meaning there might be two laboratories interpreting the same variant very differently as a consequence of having access to different annotation data resources. And so in total, the assessing of pathogenicity for variants, it's very, very time consuming and pretty much never ending process. And so these three challenges are the ones which we are focusing on. So that's the reason actually why we have created Warsom. I believe that at least some of you have seen Warsom before. So Warsom, it's a free platform. It's a genomics and knowledge base and community around it. It's free and open for everyone. And so what Warsom does, well, it does several things, but first it aggregates and cross-references publicly available annotation data. Yeah. So on Warsam, currently you can find the annotation data from over 50 data resources and we keep adding new ones on a regular basis. So for example, on Warsam, you can find the annotation data from, you know, GNOME AD, from CleanVar, you can find a somatic uh, annotation data resources such as ICGC, PMKB, Civic, Cosmic, all the transcripts from RepSeq, Ensemble, annotation data for copy number variation from Exact, Decipher, DGV, expression profiles from GTEx, uh, list of clinical trials, uh, list of drugs and treatments, in silico predictions, clinical rele relevant information for genes, phenotypes and diseases, and so on and so on. Of course, publications as well. So it's very rich, it's very complete and knowledge base, which you can leverage for interpretation of your variants. Next, Warsam keeps the annotation data always up to date, which means whenever there is an update in GNOME AD or in CleanVar, we get the notification, we get the update, and we make it available again on Warsam very quickly. So you have always the latest annotation data on Warsam. And then Warsam also implements guidelines for interpretation of pathogenicity. So for example, nowadays you can find the interpretation of pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines. Now we are also implementing guidelines for somatic interpretation according to AMP, NCCN or ASCO. These are all coming very soon. I'll get back to this later. However, the free platform, it's not only about data integration and data aggregation. It's also about you, right? Warsam has over 200,000 users globally using the platform every day. And so there is also a growing number of contributions flowing in from our global community. I mean, there is a number of, you know, classifications, comments or discussions, or Warsam can also facilitate, you know, cross, cross border collaborations between unrelated laboratories. So the aspect of the community, it's uh, of course also very, very important because this way the user, our global community en enriches uh, uh, Warsaw, you know, through additional layer of annotation data. Now, that's the story behind the free platform. Now, on top of it, 
we have developed Warsom Clinical, which is already a professional, a complete solution for interpretation of NGS data, starting from raw sequencing data, starting from FASTQ or VCF files. And at the, get, at the end of the process, you get a clinical report. Warsom Clinical is certified as a CEIDD device. It's certified as an in vitro diagnostic medical device in line with, with the requirements for medical devices. Plat the platform is also HIPAA compliant, which is relevant you know, for our US-based customers. Uh, and our company is obviously also GDPR compliant. And we are certified with ISO certificates for data quality and data security. And so in other words, with Warsaw Clinical, you can process your NGS data starting from FASTQ or VCF in four steps. First, you shall upload your sequencing data to our servers. We operate number of deployments of Warsaw Clinical. However, for our European customers, uh, we use our own physical server located in Switzerland, and that's where you are supposed to upload your, your sequencing data. We can take FASTQ files from Illumina or MGI. And when it comes to the VCF files, there are more options. We can take any VCF file as long as it conforms to the standards for VCF files, which can be a VCF file from, you know, generated in your pipeline, or it can be a VCF file coming from Thermo Fisher, from PassBio, from IonTorrent, and so on. With Wallaston Clinical, you can process any kind of NGS data, be it a commercial a gene panel, such as, you know, a gene panel, gene panels, you know, designed by Swift Bio or by Four Bases or Paragon Genomics or Nonacus or Illumina, Agilent, and so on. Or it can be your in house built a gene panel or exon or genome. It, it doesn't really matter as long as you sequence on Illumina or MGI. Once you upload your data, you can run the pipeline. Warsam Clinical, run, Warsam Clinical offers a wide range of pipelines covering pretty much all the clinical use cases. So we have pipelines for germline samples, for, clinic, uh, for somatic samples. We have a pipeline for uh, de novo variants in trios. We have a pipeline for uh, for carrier risk screening for couples, for uh, tumor normal pairs, including a pipeline for copy number variation and structural variation. And the latest addition to the pipeline portfolio is a pipeline which supports uh, UMIS, unique molecular identifiers for detection of low frequency variants typically found in somatic samples. As I mentioned before, Warsam Clinical runs on our servers, which means you don't need to install anything locally. Everything runs on our servers and you access it over the internet as if it was a regular website, which means you don't need to worry about hardware infrastructure. You don't need to worry about updates. You don't need to worry about security and so on. We take care of all these aspects and the platform is available all the time. And in the last step uh, of, the, of the pipeline or of the data, data analysis, you can generate a clinical report, which can be fully customizable according to your specific workflow. So it's a kind of like an interactive reporting where you have a complete control over the appearance of it, as well as all what the data to be included in the clinical report. In fact, you know, the challenge here is the interpretation part of the pipeline. And I believe, you know, you would agree with me here, you know, to do the read alignment and variant calling is relatively, relatively simple. You know, the real, the real challenge really lies in the interpretation part of the pipeline. And that's what we are focusing on. That's our main you know, uh, focus here, the interpretation part of the pipeline. 
Warsaw Clinical, it's not a complete replacement for in-house bioinformatics expertise, right? Warsaw Clinical is a productivity tool which allows your bioinformaticians to be more productive, more systematic, focus the energy where it is really needed and be able to deliver results quickly. And so in-house expertise, bioinformatics expertise, it's still you know, very valuable, of course. But it allows you to be more you know, productive and systematic. And over time, increase the diagnostic yield, as you will see a bit later. Now, I just you know, want to share with you very quickly you know, the list of clients. So we, as a Swiss company, we have you know, clients in pretty much in all the European countries. Uh, as well as in the Middle East, and we have number number of customers also on the global level in the U.S., Latin America, Southeast Asia, uh, India, and so on. Now, from the a business model perspective, Warsaw Clinical doesn't have a license. Warsaw Clinical charges on a per sample basis, yeah? which means we charge you only when you use the platform. The price of the analysis depends on the size of your sample. So when it comes to the fast Q files, the price for annotation depends on the size of the sample in terms of megabases in reads. And when it comes to VCF files, the price depends on the number of variants. So it's a very straightforward business model which is not binding, which means there is no license, just sample fee. There are, in fact, two ways how you can use Marston Clinical. You can use it as the so-called standalone solution. So the standalone solution is open for any kind of NGS data, for exome, for genome, for commercial gene panel, for custom-built gene panel, for any, any kind of NGS sample and we charge you on a pay-as-you-go basis, which means once we open the production account for you, uh, we will send you, you know, a monthly invoices or quarterly invoices based on the usage of the platform. The other option is the so-called bundled solution. So bundled solution is a form of prepayment where you can prepay a specific number of analyses according to, to, the, to, to the essays you use. Yeah? So basically what we can do here, we can bundle, for example, the Swiss Biosciences essay or four basis essay, we can bundle it with Warsom Clinical for data interpretation and reporting. So two options, pay as you go with monthly invoicing and prepayments. Uh, in fact, there's actually a third option which it's like an on-site installation on your own physical server, but this is relevant only for large uh, diagnostic centers. Uh, we collaborate with distributors. So obviously in Portugal, we have started collaboration with ILC, uh, who is very well uh, familiarized with our platform. They can answer all your questions, they can provide you support and trainings. All right, so this is just a very quick introduction to our company and to Varsom and to Varsom Clinical. Now, I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of both platforms. So first, let's take a look on the free platform. Uh, I, I believe that you know you have seen it before. As I mentioned before, it's free and open for everyone. And so here you can see you know, the example of a result page for a particular variant in a BRAF gene here, right? And so here first you can, you can see the common information for the variant, chromosomal position, AGBS term, the gene associated with it. And right Next to it here, you can see the 
interpretation of pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines. So I'd like to stop here for a while and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about how the interpretation engine works here. So first, uh, what some uh, interpretation of pathogenicity is based on ACMG guidelines and it's very robust. It's very complete because it leverages the annotation data coming from all these uh, 50 data resources. So it's a very robust implementation of ACMG guidelines. Also, it's a very transparent implementation of ACMG guidelines because here it tells you for each criterion why it fired or why it didn't fire. So this is something what allows you to review each particular criterion and make your own judgment call in line with your best knowledge. So secondly, it's very transparent. And third, it's also flexible or customizable, right? Not all the ACMG criteria can be fully automated. Certain criteria such as PM, PM3, PP4, BP2, these BP5, these criteria require a patient specific information, which is not available to us. That's available to you, right? So in certain cases, you also need to take into consideration, you know, allele segregation information or family history, for example. Yeah? So in those cases, you know, you can trigger additional criteria according to your additional knowledge. You can also specify here the strength of the evidence in line with ACMG guidelines. And you can also specify here, for example, the transcript, which may affect obviously, you know, the final verdict here. Now, going farther down the page here, you can see the gene browser, where you can see, you know, all the variants within the same gene. So here there is a number of pathogenic variants, for example. So this is a probably a mutational hotspot here. And here for every variant here in the gene browser, you can see the supporting evidence coming from all these data resources. So here you can see that this, for this particular variant, there is an entry in Uniprot, ClinVar, DBSN, Caviar, ICGC, Cosmic, and so on. Then here you can see the contributions from our global community. As I was saying before, what some users like to contribute back, right? So what some users link functional studies, link publications, you know, to variants, classify variants, or start discussions, or even start new collaborations. So this is the additional layer of annotation data, which is very unique, you know, to Varsa, which is nowhere else to be found, and it comes from our, you know, 200,000 users globally. So there is a quite a few contributions, as you can see. Well, this is particularly well-studied variant in a graph chip. So there are quite a few, oof, quite a few contributions. Then here you can see the list of list of publications, you know, relevant for the variant structure of variant browser, where you can see the CNVs, you know, coming from exact CNVs, decipher, clean var, clean var, DGV, and so on. Here you can see all the transcripts from RefSeq and Ensemble, clean var entries again quite a few clean bar entries, uh, Uniprot entries, population frequencies from GNOME AD project, from Bravo, uh, PMKB, this is a particularly important, you know, uh, data resource for interpretation of somatic, uh, somatic variation. PMKB stands for the Precision Medicine Knowledge Base. It's a manually curated list of variants by Whale Cornell Institute in New York which also includes list of drugs and uh, list of clinical trials and the number of other somatic data resources such as ICGC, COSMIC, CIVIC and so on and so on. Clinically relevant you know, data resources such as genomic data commands and then at the end the number of uh, in silico pathogenicity predictions and conservation scores. So here you can see that on a single page you get a wealth of annotation data coming from all these, you know, uh, 50 data resources plus uh, interpretation of the pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines. The kind of limitation of the free platform is that it allows you to look up 
only one variant at a time, right? So it doesn't allow you, you know, to upload VCF, for example, only one variant at a time. Now, on top of it, uh, we have developed a Warsome Clinical, which is already, you know, you know, the complete solution for interpretation of NGS data and reporting. So Warsome Clinical is a quite complete, quite complex platform quite complex platform and so to do a full demonstration you know would take me maybe an hour and so instead you know i'm i'm gonna give you just a very quick you know introduction to it and i'll try to focus on on the most important aspects of it so once you log in you can proceed and you can upload your sequencing data right so you can upload your fastq files or vcf files uh, there is also API, the application programming interface, which allows you to upload your sequencing data automatically. Once you upload the data, you can run the pipeline, right? So here you can choose a type of pipeline, whether you want to start from FastQ or from VCF, whether you want to perform, for example, a trio analysis or carrier risk for couples or tumor normal pairs whether you want to perform a copy number variation analysis and so on. So let's see, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's try an analysis starting from fast view. So here uh, on this screen, you have to specify, you know, several details of the pipeline, right? So for example, you have to specify whether it's a single sample, whether it's family trio, you know, for de novo variants, whether it's a couple for carrier risk screening, whether it's a generic multi-sample analysis, you know, for extended families or cohorts, you shall specify whether it's a germline or somatic sample. Here you shall specify the assay. So here, you know, that can be, you know, any commercially available assay such as, you know, Swift uh, uh, 56G, you know, from Swift, Swift Bio or from Four Bases or any any other essay including your custom built essay in, in case of custom built essays you know we need you to provide us the bed file first with specification of target regions and then you can specify several other details such as the reference genome ethnicity here you can decide whether you want to perform a full full analysis or gene list a restricted analysis so for example here you can specify a gene list and use it as a filter for your analysis. So the use case for it is the is to be able to avoid incidental findings, especially when it comes to larger data sets such as exomes and genomes. And then on the left side of the screen, you, you can, for example, also type in you know, the patient phenotypes in line with HPO terms, the human phenotype ontology. So let's type in eye disease, retinopathy, and, and several other ones. So these terms, you know, allow you to prioritize your variants later in the process. And then you can already start the analysis. Um, an exome analysis takes about half an hour. A whole genome takes about five hours. Gene panels, that's the matter of, you know, a few minutes up to 10, 15 minutes. Now, I'd like to show you the results very quickly here. So here, I'm going to show you a whole genome analysis with, with uh, almost five, I think five million variants, if I recall correctly here. So this is, this is a healthy, yeah, almost five million variants in this whole genome sample. This is a healthy genome. Uh, you now, here you can see that the variants are sorted by pathogenicity according again to the ACMG guidelines. And then for each variant here, you can see the variant name, the list of ACMG criteria which fired for each individual variant, AGDS term, transcript, exon number, gene, inheritance, function, here, in terms of function, uh, Warsaw Clinical annotates against all the transcripts available from, from RefSeq and from Ensemble, as you can see here on the right side of the screen. 
uh, zygosity frequency, this is the population frequency according to the ethnicity of your patient, early balance, you know, the percentage of reads supporting the given, ver given verdict and the given variant and coverage, which is the number of reads, which is the number of reads, you know, supporting the given variant. So the coverage, this is a link actually, which, you know, once you click on it, takes you to the JBrowse view where you can see the graphical representation of your data. It takes a while to fully load, but here, here we go. So here you can see, you know, the, the alignment of, of your of, of reads in your data. Uh, there is also IGV visualization available as an option. Um, now, around the variant table, you can see number of tabs with all the annotation data, right? So for example, here, as I said before, here you can see all the transcripts from RefSeq, Ensemble, clinical relevant data from ClinVar, from HPO, the human phenotype ontology, uh, population frequencies, nearby variants. And then here you can see another set of annotation data here. Here again is the region browser where you can see all the variants within given gene with all the supporting uh, pieces of evidence here. Uh, ClinVar entries, caviar, population frequencies from GNOME AD and Bravo, uh, somatic data resources, ICGC, and genomic data commands, in silico predictions, publications, and also you know, contributions from our global community. Mm, then the platform also comes with a number of QC reports, quality control reports. So for example, here you can access, you know, the basic QC report, which summarizes the details of your analysis, databases used for the interpretation part of the pipeline, summarization of, uh, of the prim primary and secondary part of the pipeline, such as number of reads, persons on target, off target, summarization according to the coverage, according to the classification, the number of pathogenic variants and likely pathogenic variants, summarization broken down by individual ACMG criteria, and at the end, summarization by function. However, there are other QC reports, more comprehensive QC reports. So for example, here, you can also download, you know, the coding coverage report or the region list coverage report which is basically an Excel sheet where you can see the coding coverage report, right? Broken down by the genes and the region here. And most importantly, by the sequencing depth. Yeah. So this is the place uh, where you can identify the regions, you know, with a low coverage or regions which have been skipped altogether. So this is the place which allows you, you know, to troubleshoot issues with sequencing or issues with essay design, for example. And then there is a number of other QC reports or, you know, other like a fast QC report, you know, summarizing the details of, you know, the secondary part of the pipeline. Or you can also download the BAM file, index BAM file. You can download, you know, the list of variants here with annotations in an Excel sheet or in a VCF file. Again, for every step of the process, there is an API, the application programming interface, allowing you to automate every step of the analysis. Um, now, I'd like to also mention that actually with Warson Clinical, you can build over time your private database of classifications. I mean, for example, let's take this variant as an example, right? This is a pathogenic variant according to the ACMG guidelines. However, if you don't agree with it for whatever reason, according to your specific knowledge, you may reclassify the variant as a benign or variant of uncertain significance, right? Or you can set up a fully customized classifications such as variant important you know, for pharmacogenomics or variant which needs to be discussed with the lab director later. And then again, in turn, you can apply these custom classifications here to your variants. Yeah. 
And that's why here in this column here, you can see these marks, these tags, which represents your custom classifications. Okay, so these custom classifications stay with the variant uh, forever, unless you change it or remove it, which also means that whenever you upload a new sample with the same variant, you will see the same uh, classification mark here. Yeah. We can also take your manually created list of variants. I, I guess you might have it in a spreadsheet somewhere. So we can take it and upload it privately to your account with our subject. What we also do, or the platform, what it does is, is it also you know, links all the samples together on the variant level. I mean, again, let's take this variant as an example here. So here you can see under the samples tab here, you can see the list of samples sharing the same variant, right? So in this case, you can see that this variant has been found so far in three samples in heterozygous form, in this analysis, in another sample, in another whole genome sample, and then in, in a sample called test cryptic sample. So this is something what allows you, you know, to go back and forth between your past cases and current cases, compare the patient phenotypes and ultimately increase the diagnostic yield and productivity. Right? This is all about being as productive as possible and be able to increase your, your diagnostic yield for your patients. All right, now uh, filtering. So uh, filters are obviously very, very, very important, right? Especially when it comes to a larger uh, data sets such as large gene panels, exomes, or possibly genomes. And so here on the left side, you can access filters. So the filtering possibilities or capabilities are quite, you know, quite complete here. And so, for example, you can filter based on ACMG criteria. You can filter based on population frequency, based on clean var, based on pathogenicity, chromosomal position, zygosity, based on function, whether it's 5 UTF, splicing, coding, nonsense variant based on gene list. Again, you can set up a gene list and use it here as a filter for your analysis. So basically you can reuse the same data several times, right? According to specific phenotypes, for example. Call status, you can filter based on the number of, you know, uh, yeah, based on the analytic balance or coverage, the number of reads and so on and so on. And so let me give you just a quick example. So let's say we want to filter out only rare variants with a frequency less than 1%. So now uh, we are setting up a filter set, right? So the filter set may consist of several filters such as frequency filter and the other one can be a filter for pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants. Give it a name and save it. So now also please note that the filtering works really fast, right? Uh, remember that we are working with a whole genome sample with 5 million variants. So now based on the frequency filter, we have eliminated over four and a half million variants and based on the pathogenicity filter, additional 339,000 variants have been eliminated and we are left with only five variants in the variant table. Yeah, we can always you know, deactivate the filters or bring them back again and you know the variant table updates dynamically so that's the reason why we call these filters dynamic filters you can even go one step farther and you can modify the whole filter set and you can include now additional criterion additional filter based on acmg criterion pp5 for example with a supporting strength of the evidence so now we have three filters within the filter set again uh, let's apply it and now you see that we are left with only two variants in the variant table so these are you know they're super easy to use super flexible uh, filters where you can you know get the results filtered uh, dynamically so we call them uh, dynamic filters however that's not all 
what are some technical comes with even more sophisticated filters called algorithmic filters. So algorithmic filters, you can think of them as a, a little programs we built you know, specifically for each customer depending on your specific workflow. So these filters allow for a great flexibility and great deal of customization here. So here you can see just you know, several examples of the most common algorithmic filters. So for example, with algorithmic filters, you can analyze de novo variants in trios, or you can perform, again, carrier risk screening for couples, or you can perform compound heterozygous, you know, uh, analysis or segregation kind of analysis and so on. So here again, you can see the results. So now I'm going to show you very quickly an exome trio, right? So this is, a, this is the original exome trio analysis with almost 300,000 variants. And then within the origin analysis, you can see a number of sub analysis. So each sub analyze sub analysis corresponds to the results of an algorithmic filter. So for example, here you can see the results of an algorithmic filter for de novo variants in exome trio with 260 variants. Yeah. So once we click on it again. Uh, we will see the same, the same uh, variant. Well, not the same, but a similar uh, variant table now. So now, here we can see these 260 de novo candidates in exome trio, and then of course we can combine the algorithmic filters with dynamic filters. So we can filter further by population frequency, pathogenicity, or ACMG criteria. Right. So we can activate the filter set, which uh, we have created previously. And again, the results update here dynamically. So now we are left with only one de novo candidate in exome trio. And now we can review you know, all the annotation data coming from all these, from all these uh, annotation data resources we have. Um, now the last missing piece is the reporting. So let me show you very quickly how the reporting works. So it's your decision, right? You know, to select variants for the report. We give you a tool which allows you to be productive and systematic. But at the end of the day, you know, it's it, it's 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 your it's you who takes the decision about you know variants reporting. So once you decide to report it, you select it for export here. And then again, you can proceed here on the left side, you can proceed and you can generate the clinical report for this particular variant. So here you can see the reporting part of Warsome Clinical. Let me reset it first. So as I said, this is kind of like an interactive, record, interactive reporting, which gives you a complete control over the look and feel of the report. So for example, you can upload your own logo, you can set up, you know, the header here, you can, you can set your fonts, colors and sizes. In other words, you need to set up a template for it, right? And then you can use it all over again. And then on the left side here, you can see the annotation data available for a given variant, right? And that functions as a drag and drop editor. Right. So here, for example, you can drag in a content area and then you can drag in, for example, the variant information. Then you can drag in, for example, a clinically relevant gene data. And then you can drag in, uh, for example, list of list of drugs or list of list of clinical trials here. And at the end, you can also include, for example, the list of list of publications. Everything is fully editable. In fact, you can also translate it. You can try translate, you know, the common elements into, into your own language as a part of the template setup process. Here you can see the content area where you can, you know, type in your custom comment. Here you can see the information you know, relevant for the variant, the AGDS term, 
the gene, exon number, zygosity frequency. Here you can see the clinically clinically relevant data according you know to, to the phenotypes and diseases, mode of inheritance, list of drugs, list of clinical trials, and at the end a list of list of publications. Again, everything is fully editable, so you can remove publications and you can also add your own publications here according to your best knowledge and then once you are done with it you can download it as a pdf file or as a doc file yeah. so here i just want to share with you very quickly several examples of the clinical report please know that this is a default template without any styling but of course you can see that you can you know really prepare you know and various kinds kinds of reports you know depending on your on your on your specific specific needs so i would i would now conclude uh, just very quickly that uh, while some clinical you know it's a complete complete solution for interpretation of ngs data starting from fastq or vcf uh, we can take any kind of ngs data be it uh, you know commercial gene gene panel data such as swim bio four bases paragon or your custom built assay or exome or genome we can start from FASTQ or VCF. The platform is clinically certified as an IVD device, so it can be used, in fact, in clinical settings. And there is there is no license fee. There is only a sample fee, which depends on the size of your sample. And now uh, we have become partners with with the uh, ILC in Portugal, who who is now our authorized uh, distributor for your region so you may reach out to them or directly you know to me so now let me see if we've got some questions i see there is a question yeah okay that's just a common technical technical question related to the screen sharing. So Sarah, uh, have I mentioned, have I covered everything? What do you think? Would you like to stress out something? I think yes, that you covered pretty much um, everything. Um, no questions? I don't know. Oh yeah, CLV analysis, all right. Yes, so the Valsam clinical also comes with a pipeline for a copy number variation and structural variation. We, we implement the exome depth a package for, for CNV calling. And so you, you need to at least, you need to upload at least, you know, five samples, ideally 10 samples sequenced in the same sequencing run. Yeah. Um, And the, the pipeline for CNVs, it's included in the original sample price. So with us, you always pay only for, for the sample, you know, and, you know for, the, for, the, for the single sample. And then all the filters, all, all other pipelines are included in the original sample fee. Uh, there's a question about trios. Yes, we do have a pipeline for trios. Uh, you can do de novo, you can call de novo variants in trios, you know, or, you know, we can even build a specific, you know, a, a filtering scheme for you according to your specific needs using these algorithmic filters. Yes, so here, for example, when launching the, uh, the pipeline for trios here, you have to specify here, you know, every every single sample, right? The child, mother, and father, and you have to also specify whether it's an affected or unaffected patient. And again, you can type in the phenotypes or diseases in line with HPO terms, and later you can use these terms, you know, for variant filtering and prioritization. All right, I think we have used up pretty much, you know, the time for our webinar. 
So I'd like to thank you for taking time today for, for being here and for, for your interest in, um, in, in, uh, in, our, in our tools for, for NGS data. Um, from my side, I think that's everything. Sara, would you like to add something? I don't know if you still have time, but I think we have two more questions. I don't think you replied to this one. Did you? Yeah, there is there is a more complex question about trios from from Fatima, but Fatima, okay. I'll, I'll get back to you over email with more details after the webinar. Okay. So I think uh, we covered pretty much everything. No. Yep. So thanks to everybody to participate. And any questions you can email us or Thomas. Absolutely. Yeah, feel free to reach out to Sarah or to me directly. All right. Thank you very much again and uh, have a nice weekend. Bye bye. You have a nice weekend. Bye and stay safe.